Okay, uh, welcome everyone to the webinar, Extending Your Dataset with Web Data in IBM Watson Studio. My name is Domagoy. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, web scraping today, how it, uh, it can help us with uh, our data needs and how to integrate uh, your own web scraper in IBM Watson Studio to get uh, more of web data inside your uh, data assets for further machine learning or AI purposes. Uh, this is uh, the presentation. It's the first part of the webinar. And then the second part will be the demonstration. Um, inside this uh, presentation, we will talk a bit, uh, a bit about web scraping and web crawling. What's the difference? Uh, what you have to know uh, before uh, attempting to make your own web scraper, uh, what are the use cases, uh, what's NLP, how it helps people, and uh, what, what is IBM Watson, the Watson Studio, uh, Watson Studio service for uh, AI and machine learning, and uh, Jupyter notebooks uh, with Python and how to connect uh, your own Python code uh, inside of Watson Studio. Uh, okay, first the definition, uh, web crawlers or are, on, are online bots which uh, systematically browse the web and uh, look for uh, interesting information which, you, uh, which is desired for some external purpose. And then web scraping is the process uh, which is done after we get to the data we extract the information from uh, the web pages or the HTML documents uh, behind those pages. HTML is the presentational language behind uh, each web page. And uh, web crawling and web scraping uh, are, are making, constructing a cycle. Uh, web crawlers find the data, you uh, follow links that you haven't visited, and then when you get to the uh, web page you visit it, you extract the information via uh, web scraping and also extract the links which you then again follow and then the cycle is completed. Uh, the use cases where uh, web scraping can help. Uh, first, uh, the price competitiveness where uh, people usually do uh, the monitoring of uh, competitors' prices and then adjust their own according to them. Uh, effective research of market scenarios, which means uh, you research uh, the market before you place uh, your own product or service on it. Online reputation management, um, consumer sentiment analysis, which, uh, which represents uh, the monitoring of social media reviews where you uh, get the, the reviews and then do machine learning processes of uh, sentiment analysis on them. Uh, marketing automation, lead generation, uh, also uh, human resources uh, uh, often use uh, web scraping for uh, their regu uh, rec recruitment process uh, where they find uh, try to find uh, relevant synonyms uh, in the profiles of uh, candidates and of course content aggregation where you uh, where you need additional data and then uh, search for it on the web and when you get the data you organize it into knowledge bases uh, web crawling policies there are four policies with which uh, describe uh, the behavior of uh, web crawler. Uh, the most important ones are the selection and politeness policy. The selection policy uh, deals with uh, which pages you should download, which have the highest priority, uh, the most relevant content. And the politeness policy uh, deals with how to avoid overloading the websites that you crawl. Uh, there are also two additional policies, the revisit policy, when to check for changes on page, pages, when to refresh your content, and the parallelization policy uh, on how to create distributed web crawlers. Um, 
the most important policy, as I said, is uh, the politeness policy. And there are many mechanisms uh, that uh, help in dealing with politeness. The first one is the user agent. The user agent is the string that uh, is used for identifying yourself to the server. Uh, most uh, web browsers have a user agent value in the format, uh, the version of the browser, browser the system information, the platform, platform details, extensions, and so on. For example, this is uh, how, it, uh, how a user agent looks like for Chrome on Windows. And uh, automated bots or crawlers have uh, another format, uh, the name of the bot, the version, and there is usually a, a URL address or an email address uh, on which uh, the administrators of the page uh, can contact you if something's wrong uh, with your crawling process. Uh, there is also the rob robots.txt uh, file. Uh, which is used uh, by the owners of the web pages to give uh, instructions to the crawlers about what uh, what they can and what they must not uh, crawl. For example, um, there there are there is the syntax of rules. For example, uh, the to exclude all uh, crawlers from the entire server. This is the first example you disallow the root disallow everything uh, to allow everything you uh, you can uh, put disallow and then nothing or you can allow root uh, there are also um, additional uh, syntax rules uh, where you can uh, give partial partial uh, partial disallow or allow and uh, you can also exclude a single robot which is uh, which is doing something wrong, and then you disallow uh, for that bot. You disallow the the access, and for all others, or for the, the asterisk, uh, you uh, allow them the access. Uh, for example, uh, an example of uh, the whole disallow. Uh, LinkedIn, they are very serious with with the web crawling. They don't like it. And uh, you can crawl if you uh, apply for whitelisting. Uh, in the past, there were there were also many cases where they sued uh, individuals for scraping their data. And uh, last year, there was also a public uh, ruling which uh, stated that uh, it protected the crawlers and stated that uh, scraping of public data is uh, okay, but it's America, it's uh, it's still a gray zone in other parts of the world, and you should be careful. You should try to be polite, and everything's going to be fine. Um, other police, uh, politeness policy mechanisms: uh, the robots.txt uh, file often has uh, some additional parameters like crawl delay or la rate limit. Uh, the crawl delay says. Uh, how long you have to wait between two requests and the rate limit uh, says how many uh, requests you can do in a second or a minute and politeness means obeying the restrictions uh, also if the crawl delay is not given in the file you should use a shorter delay so you don't overdo it uh, some robots.txt files also contain a, a link to a so-called sitemap uh, a sitemap is a list of all URL addresses of the pages on the website. It's uh, very useful for uh, web crawlers because it saves time. They don't have to do the manual parsing of the pages and uh, parsing uh, of the robots.txt rules. It's usually in XML or TXT format. Uh, the TXT has uh, one URL per line. And uh, the X XML format has also priorities uh, when uh, a certain site was last uh, modified and so on, which, which is also very useful uh, also for the selection policy. Uh, there are many pages which were made uh, uh, especially for uh, the web scraping where you can practice your web scraping skills. One of them is quote to scrape. Uh, 
I have to recommend it because it's a great place to start scraping, to start uh, learning how to navigate the HTML documents. Uh, there are 20 or so quotes which were uh, linked by various tags and so you can try and uh, crawl through them all and scrape uh, whatever content you want. Uh, knowledge prerequisites, uh, what you have to know before you get into web scraping. HTML uh, is the presentation language between, uh, be behind all uh, web pages, so some basic knowledge of it is uh, necessary. Uh, what, what are tags, uh, what attributes are, what uh, tags have which attributes, um, what are ID and class of a certain tag and so on. Uh, there is also an additional aspect of it, uh, the XPath language or the XML path language, uh, which is used uh, to uh, navigate uh, through the HTML documents. For example, if you use in this example, if you use HTML body form and uh, one in brackets, it means that you go down the structure. You go HTML, then body tag, then form, and then you pick the first one. It is indexed by one, starting by one. So it's it's a simple but effective syntax uh, on navigating th through the structure. And uh, regex or regular expressions, uh, another good skill to have. Um, there are, they are sequences of uh, characters which represent a larger set of sequences of characters, which means uh, that if you scrape web pages and you get the HTML document, you can use regular expressions to find uh, a specific type of content. For example, the expression on this slide is uh, the one for finding uh, email addresses. So you can find all email addresses on the page and uh, save them in your database. Uh, the uh, second example is for MAC addresses. So you have uh, uh, zero to nine, A to F, and then six uh, groups of them. Uh, web scraping tools in Python. Uh, the, first, the first thing you have to know that uh, web crawling is not necessary all the time. If you have uh, APIs that uh, get get you data, then you have uh, you don't have the need for web crawling. Uh, for example, in Python uh, for Wikipedia or Twitter or Reddit, you have uh, corresponding uh, APIs for them, and uh, you don't have to crawl search for the desired content you have uh, the methods that you use and then you get the data. Um, requests is the first tool in Python which you need to learn uh, to start uh, crawling or scraping. It's used uh, for uh, get uh, HTTP requests mostly where you uh, do a get request and you get the HTML document of a site. Uh, it's very intuitive. Uh, you can learn it fairly quickly. Uh, also, it's uh, very simple. You get you do the get request, uh, and it gives you the status code, the, the headers, and in the end, the content uh, that you need. Uh, there is also an, another module in Python which is uh, part of the standard distribution. It's called URL lib, but uh, request is uh, um, very popular and uh, used uh, used much more than the URL lib module. Uh, the beautiful soup module is a module for parsing uh, the of the HTML and XML documents. It uh, deals uh, also with malformed markup or uh, tag soup as it's called. Uh, it's uh, here's a simple example how it works. It's very simple. Uh, you get the page, you get the response. On the response, you initiate the beautiful soup class, uh, and then you part the structure uh, and use the find all. Uh, in this example, you're searching for a tags, which means uh, links, and you get the href um, attributes 
on getting the URL addresses of the links. Um, the ad advantages of uh, Beautiful Soup are that uh, all the parsers are, are included. Uh, you can uh, you can use the included HTML parser, or you can uh, use the LXML parser, which we are uh, going to talk about in a minute. Uh, also, there is the HTML5 lib parser. You have just you just have to download the additional parsers, and everything is ready to go. Um, it's it's it has decent speed, and uh, the the best thing is that uh, it's easy to learn, and the navigation functions are very simple. If you need to search for a certain tag, you do find or find all. Also, also you can search by class, by ID, and so on. The only disadvantage, disadvantage uh, is that uh, it doesn't support X, XPath, and uh, also it's not made for JavaScript, dynamic pages, uh, but we'll talk about what you can do about that later. LXML is an alternative. Uh, it's a binding for C libraries, and uh, it's the, the fastest option for web scraping in Python. It combines the speed of C and the simplicity of Python, and uh, uh, it supports uh, XPath and additional uh, languages for uh, various file transformations like uh, XSLT and the ex uh, extended version. It can also be combined, as I said, with Beautiful Soup. Uh, you can use uh, Beautiful Soup, but use the LXML parser for additional speed. And also, you have to uh, take into account the politeness policy. Even if it's the fastest option for web scraping, you have to wait a certain time uh, because of the crawl delay. If that's the case, uh, then you have to uh, you have to think again about uh, what tool you want to use, the speed or the uh, additional more formed markup uh, option with Beautiful Soup. Um, Scrapey is another framework for uh, web scraping uh, in Python. Uh, it's in contrast to all the other tools. It's a common line tool. Uh, and uh, when you start uh, working in Scrapey, you uh, type in Scrapey start project and the name of your project. Then it does all the magic work uh, in the beginning. It creates a directory in which you have uh, all the setting files, uh, which you can, of course, adjust later. And then you uh, create spiders or crawlers uh, as uh, classes in Python scripts. Uh, the two uh, basic methods of the class are start requests, where you specify which URLs you want to go to, which are the forbidden domains. Maybe you want to do uh, do it like um, in a way that you scrape only one domain, and if it uh, goes away from the domain, then you uh, stop with the uh, stop with ex the execution. And then the parse method, with which uh, where you specify uh, what to do with the content that you got from the responses. Uh, in Scrapey, there are various advanced uh, mechanisms uh, that that are already implemented, uh, like crawl delay, uh, the parser for robots, robots uh, .txt. I think it's called Protego, and uh, elimination of uh, the duplicated requests. Uh, it also has a detailed logging system, which uh, gives you uh, the image of what's really going on under the hood. And uh, my opinion about this, uh, these mechanisms, they're all awesome to work with, but uh, they're all already implemented, which means that you don't have the flexibility to do something on your own. Uh, Scrapey Shell is the best thing about Scrapey. It's the best tool to start learning uh, about web scraping and various selectors. Uh, you uh, type in Scrapey Shell and the URL of the page which you want to start scraping, and then you get the response. After you get the response, 
you can um, you can use various selectors like XPath, uh, CSS, uh, regular expressions to uh, scrape and find the data you're interested in, and then uh, you you have a sandbox environment where you can practice your skills, which is awesome. Uh, Selenium WebDriver is another framework uh, for web scraping, but uh, it's primarily used uh, for testing of uh, web uh, applications. It uh, It is an app for uh, automated browsing of the web. Uh, it's available in multiple languages, not only Python. Uh, and um, the best uh, thing about Selenium is uh, it supports uh, various human behavior like functions for example mouse clicks uh, scrolls with the mouse uh, typing text into a field also there are um, screen capture or uh, screenshot capabilities uh, you can uh, make your own profiles for example in firefox uh, you have the prompt that asks you when you when you download a picture or an image file uh, you they ask you if you want to open it or save it uh, you can also automate that you can uh, put it into your profile and then it uh, does the decision for you uh, selenium uh, supports various browsers uh, you have to uh, have the browser installed firstly and then you need the driver for the browser and then you can start uh, doing your own uh, selenium script where you uh, put your operations into code and then uh, the browser does what you typed and what you said him to do. Uh, this is an example how it works. Uh, this is a Mozilla Firefox browser which looks exactly the same like the uh, like the original one but uh, this is called the gecko driver. The only difference is the address bar is orange and uh, there's a little robot near the address bar and then everything's automated there is no human intervention uh, there are also various tools outside of python which i'm uh, gonna mention here quickly uh, in javascript and node uh, there are phantom js and puppeteer which are uh, nowadays really popular they also support um, headless browsing which is nice uh, in c c plus plus and julia it's the same aspect you have three uh, libraries the first one downloads the HTML file, the second one converts it to a valid XML and parses the source, and then the third one is used for navigating the XML uh, by using CSS selectors. In R, there is the most popular uh, module Arvest, and uh, in Java, um, there are three main libraries which are used for web scraping JSOUP, which is uh, very similar to uh, Beautiful Soup. Uh, it also doesn't support uh, XPath. HTML unit uh, is uh, used like Selenium, which means uh, it's uh, capable uh, to, to simul simulate uh, various events. And Jaunt, uh, which can be used uh, uh, for parsing the HTML and for documents and JSON data. And uh, uh, it also supports uh, JavaScript as of uh, last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, building a scraper, the basic concept is you choose the content which you want to scrape. You find the uh, corresponding uh, robot.txt file and check the rules. Are you allowed to scrape or not? If you are, then uh, it's good. You can go further with the uh, with the steps, uh, then you have to plan uh, a crawling strategy, which means uh, if you have multiple pages to crawl and have to um, have to navigate through the site structure, for example, you have to go through all the pages, numbered pages, the first one, the second one, and then you get to the end, the 17th page. And what then, you maybe you have some tags how to go through the whole website and so on. Uh, the best tool for doing the web scraping part and how to navigate the HTML structure is inspect or inspect element, which every modern uh, web browser nowadays has. 
uh, it's a uh, great uh, functionality which uh, gives you it gives you the ability to inspect every uh, every element in a page by right clicking and then you get the source behind that element in the form of text attributes and so on and then after you inspect the page you get the grasp of uh, what the page really is behind the scenes then you uh, start building the scraper for the pages uh, the first uh, thing is uh, how to uh, navigate through the html document uh, which uh, selectors to, uh, are you going to use for example css uh, selectors or xpath or uh, regular expressions and so on uh, and uh, the second uh, part is uh, you have to choose the best tool for the job which means if the page is dynamic you won't choose beautiful soup you're gonna you're, you're probably gonna go with uh, scrapey or selenium uh, the second part of the presentation is uh, I'm going to talk about uh, natural language processing. Uh, it's the common subfield of artificial intelligence and all the subfields like machine learning and deep learning. And on the other side, uh, there's the, the field of linguistics. Uh, it, NLP gives the computers the ability to read and understand human or natural languages. Uh, NLP is used for various purposes, uh, for example, virtual assistants are popular nowadays, or so-called chatbots. Uh, sentiment analysis, uh, which means monitoring the perception of consumers of, a, of your own brand or service. Uh, and uh, human resources also use NLP when they search for candidates, uh, and uh, they also use virtual assistants. Uh, for uh, the automation of the re registration and the recruitment process. Uh, search engine optimization, which means usually means document relevancy. We all know Google use it every day. Google also uh, has a search engine uh, under the hood, which does all the NLP jobs uh, that are invisible for us. Uh, email classification, uh, the popular spam versus ham problem where you classify uh, email uh, emails uh, into two groups spam or unwanted mail and ham uh, useful mail and also phishing detection uh, where uh, NLP used uh, to detect malicious mails which uh, try to get sensitive data from their victims and uh, there are also many other applications like machine translation, for example, Google, Google Translate, and uh, the summarization of text, and so on. Uh, IBM Watson is the leading platform for uh, NLP for leveraging the, its strengths uh, in your own business environment. There are various NLP tools, uh, as well as other uh, AI tools, like tools for visual recognition and so on uh, and uh, the best advantage of uh, using IBM Watson it's it's that it's simple it's easy to use and uh, to apply it inside your own uh, environment there are many uh, tools in on the Watson platform but I'm going to mention some of them uh, that we used in the past and uh, use uh, today Watson assistant uh, a tool for making uh, conversational interfaces or chatbots. Uh, Watson Studio, which are, we are going to talk a little bit about later, and uh, there's on, also going to be a demonstration. Uh, Discovery, which is used for uh, semantic or cognitive search and analytics. Um, language translator to identify the input text and uh, translate it into another language. Uh, machine learning for machine learning purposes natural language classifier and understanding for various NLP tasks, uh, personality insights, uh, which can be used in um, the field of uh, HR, where you uh, can get uh, the psychological traits of an individual. You get the big five analysis and the analysis of uh, values and needs of an individual. Speech to text, where you get the transcription of uh, speech and text to speech, where you generate uh, uh, natural sounding speech from uh, text 
also tone analyzer for getting the sentiment or tone, emotions from uh, a text. Watson Studio is a tool meant for the integration of machine learning processes into your own business processes and uh, it's, a, it's a development environment for uh, data scientists or engineers and business analysts where they can, uh, they can do various AI uh, jobs. Uh, it has modular flow which is uh, why it has become very popular. Um, even if you are not an expert in machine learning, you can uh, you can solve some tasks uh, by using machine learning and your data, and uh, you you are doing it uh, very visually or graphically by connecting uh, some uh, elements and then uh, making your own flow. Uh, Watson Studio also can be combined with other Watson services. For example, uh, if you are working with image data, you can um, connect it to the visual recognition service. If you want to classify uh, te uh, text data, then you can uh, use the natural language classifier and so on. And uh, it also supports uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, Jupyter is, um, is a uh, non-profit organization which uh, develops open source software and uh, their web app uh, Jupyter Notebooks is an interactive uh, open source web application where you can create and share your documents which can contain uh, various types of uh, code, uh, text or markdown and uh, various uh, very useful visualizations. Uh, it supports uh, over 40 program programming languages the most popular being Python, uh, R, Julia, and Scala, which are uh, data science languages. Uh, this is how it looks uh, in an example. You have some text, you explain the theory, for example, then you get into coding, uh, try to analyze the data, uh, do some visualizations, and so on. Uh, in conclusion, uh, we talked about what web scraping and web crawling, what's the difference. Uh, the most important policy about doing uh, web crawling is polite, the politeness policy. You have to be careful not to overload the pages which you crawl. Uh, scraping is, is, a very, uh, is a very useful skill nowadays to have. Um, natural language processing, we also talked about uh, what, what, the, what it is and why it, why it used. And uh, about uh, IBM Watson, which is the uh, most popular platform for uh, doing NLP jobs. And uh, now we'll have a little demonstration in uh, Watson Studio uh, where we are um, doing uh, our own web scraper and web crawler. And uh, we are going to extend our data asset collection in Watson Studio by uh, scraping web data. Okay, uh, also if you have any questions, feel free to uh, as, ask them during the demo in the Q&A section. Now I'm gonna share the another page. Okay, uh, we are currently in Watson Studio. This is how it looks. You have the over, overview, uh, assets, environments, uh, jobs, and so on. The first uh, thing you have to do is go into settings and then you have to uh, get, create a new access token, which is used uh, for the communication uh, from uh, your Python code to your data assets. Once you've uh, created your token, you can uh, insert it uh, inside your code in Jupyter Notebook. Um, by uh, doing a certain operation which I will show later or you can also find it in your uh, project uh, ID. You have to get the project ID which is uh, contained in the URL and uh, the second thing is the token which I mentioned. Okay, uh, what are we gonna scrape? Uh, the first example which I'm going to show is uh, 
dealing with APIs. Uh, to get the API data, you have uh, to use uh, the requests module. So we can, uh, for example, uh, get the data for uh, the coronavirus counts, for example, for Croatia, the, we want to get the uh, confirmed uh, recovered cases and deaths, and then you, uh, we can calculate the uh, actual count of how many are infected currently. So we can try, uh, yes, it's, it has loaded the web scraping project. We get to assets and then we have to uh, add to project a new, a new notebook. It's a little bit long. Here it is, okay. Uh, we can type a name, for example, BS demo, which means beautiful soup, BS4. Uh, we have to select the runtime. Uh, we will use the Python write runtime for uh, the version 3.6. Uh, we can also create the notebook from a file locally or, or from a URL address. Now we will have to wait uh, for the runtime to be started. And here it is, it's how it looks. And then uh, the communication between uh, the code and the data assets uh, works uh, via the module project lib. Uh, we have to insert the project token. And yes, we got the project ID, which is, as I said, uh, also contained in the URL and we get the access token that we uh, that we created in the settings tab and then we can use uh, the method save data for example um, to save a csv uh, file file name uh, test.csv the data that we are going to save is uh, a dot uh, comma b backslash n c comma d and also there uh, there's another uh, another additional parameter overwrite uh, which uh, if you don't specify it and the data asset with the name is already in your data asset collection then you get an error or um, if you specify it uh, true then it's uh, going to be overwritten, and if you specify false, then nothing is going to happen. And we can uh, test it. We go into our collection, and yes, we got the test.csv data asset. We can also look how it looks like. While we are waiting, uh, I can also show uh, how pip works. Pip uh, is an operation where you can uh, install Python modules. Um, pip uh, install request, for example, the first uh, module that we're going to use. Um, it's not needed here because requests is already uh, installed in the 
standard distribution of Anaconda, which is um, always connected with Jupyter. The same uh, goes for uh, Beautiful Soup, but we are not going to do that here. Uh, and yes, we can we can um, look at the asset. And yes, we got A and B in the header and C and D in the body of the CSV structure. Uh, then we are going to try to get the data from the API. Uh, first, we need to import the requests. And uh, we can also specify, we can, we can import uh, beautiful soup for later. Um, BS4 import beautiful soup. Uh, we are also going to need pandas. And uh, two constants, a user agent that we are going to use, for example, scraping test. And um, delay for a constant del delay of in seconds, which we are uh, using inside the code. We also have to import uh, the time package uh, and JSON package for uh, doing the delays and uh, the parsing of the JSON structure. Okay, uh, then we we can uh, get the URL of the page we which we are uh, scraping. Uh, after that, we specify the headers. It's a dictionary, and uh, the the key is user agent, and the value will be the user agent value that we specified as a constant. Uh, after that, we uh, do the request, request dot get the URL and headers are the one that we specified. After that, we uh, can do a cooldown period of two seconds. And uh, we get the data by doing R uh, and the attribute text. And uh, we can, uh, or no, th this is going to be a JSON, JSON uh, data structure. So uh, we can use JSON uh, load as uh, method uh, which we uh, which gives us the dictionary or no it's going to be a list of dictionaries uh, of the text or content we have got uh, from the document and uh, as we can see it starts uh, the first entry is uh, from the 22nd of January, and the last entry is going to be today or the last day. So uh, we will use minus one, which means the last element. And then, uh, if we if we print the data and the cases, we will get the number of confirmed cases in Croatia. And yes, it's 2000. 336. Uh, if we need uh, the actual number of uh, infected, then we can uh, do, for example, counts and do a for loop, which means um, we are uh, we can for for tie, for example, type count type in confirmed, um, recovered, I think, and deaths. And then we, instead of the print, we append it to the count. And then the infected count is going to be count zero and we sub subtract the one and the 
to index. And we can print it in fact it count. It's gonna take six or more seconds because we have three delays. Oh yes, and uh, I didn't I didn't specify that it's uh, changed count type. We're doing three requests. Uh, the first one is for confirmed, the second one is for recovered, and the third one is for deaths. And uh, we get the total infected count, which is 87. This is a simple example. Now we are getting to uh, a more complex one. Uh, we are going to analyze some uh, user reviews on movies. Uh, for example, on the page Metacritic, the first uh, thing we said that we have to do is uh, find the desired content. Uh, the content is inside these user reviews. We are going to use it uh, for some an a sentiment analysis processes and we need the, the text of the review and the score which the user gave with the review. The, the second thing we have to do is uh, look for the robots.txt file. And yeah, we, we can uh, see that uh, uh, nothing of uh, that is forbidden. Uh, you, you are forbidden to use the uh, login and users and sign up uh, pages uh, by automated means and uh, you are not allowed to scrape uh, the search results on the page everything else is uh, allowed also you can see a sitemap link which is interesting and yeah back to the page uh, we then inspect element right click inspect and uh, you can see the console where you can uh, highlight certain elements uh, all we can also limit the part of the page which uh, these reviews are contained in uh, for example this is a division tag with class uh, user reviews so we can um, try to limit it first to that one section okay so we can uh, define a method analyze reviews for example and the movie um, print movie and in the second field we are gonna invoke it uh, reviews for example the show redemption and yes we get the movie uh, the first the first uh, thing is how to get the URL. You can see that the URL has the name of the movie. And it's uh, lowercase and also uh, it's uh, the white, white spaces uh, are uh, replaced by hyphens. So we can do the same movie lower and replace white space with hyphen and then we can replace this with the movie this is a percentage sign and yes the this is not s this is movie yeah. analyze reviews we didn't print it URL and yes we get the URL address after that uh, we can uh, do the same thing which we have done uh, in the field above we specify the headers it's again user agent and the user agent we have specified above and then we do the request dot get on the URL and the headers which we are using are the ones specified. Uh, after that we can give it a cooldown period and we get the data. Uh, we can name it content this time 
uh, by using the text attribute r text, and uh, we have to initiate the beautiful soup class on the content we got from the page, and we can use the uh, default HTML parser. If we don't specify it, we are going to get the warning, so it doesn't matter if you uh, if you don't look for a warning. Um, then we can um, we can uh, limit as as I said uh, limit the page to the user reviews. Uh, user reviews container is what we are going to call it. Container. We're going to search in soup, find uh, find all if we want to find multiple. Find if we uh, has we are searching for one. Uh, find and it's called div or division tag, and we also give it a small dictionary where we specify the class and the class is user reviews, which we can also uh, copy paste. And then we can see what we got. Container dot get text is for getting all the text in the tag. And yes, we got the score, the author, the date, the text, how many users found, found this uh, helpful. And yes, for all the other reviews, the same. Now we have to search uh, for uh, the text of the, of the reviews and for the number scores. The number scores are going to be uh, simple, so let's try it first. We get the ratings uh, by uh, doing the same search. Um, user reviews container and find all. What are we searching for? We can right click on a number. And yes, we we are searching for a div with uh, class left fl. Div and again the dictionary where the class is left fl. And uh, we can also strip the numbers so we can remove all the white space and um, we can turn it into integers so we can do a simple list comprehension integer of uh, i dot uh, get text and strip for i in and the thing we typed in and if we print the ratings, we should get all the number ratings in the page. And yes, we got uh, 100 ratings. The second thing we have to uh, get is the text of the review. The text is um, located in the summary and the review body. And we can search uh, again for the div tag with the class review body. Uh, another thing you have to uh, keep in mind is that not all of them have all the text in, um, in that tag. Some have a pretty long text and have the expand button, which or, uh, it maybe contains spoilers or um, it's pretty long and then it's shortened in the, in the original div tag. So um, we can find one such tag, inspect it, and we can see that here's a blurb collapsed and expanded, and the text we are searching for is the long version, and it's uh, located in the expanded tag, the span tag with class expanded. Um, and yes, 
we can now type that in in our code. User reviews are what we are looking for. User reviews container. Find all. And we are searching for a div with class review body. Uh, and yes, then we are going to specify an empty list and we can fill it with uh, the reviews for review in user reviews. We are searching for the span. If uh, it's if the span tag is there, then you we will get the span text. And if it's not there, then we get the original text, which is in the review body. So uh, span is uh, we search in the review with the find method, and we are searching for div with the class blurb and blurb expanded. Uh, if span, which means if span is not none or null, then we append uh, the span dot text dot strip to remove the white spaces. Else, if it's none, then just append the one that we got in the re user reviews. Review dot text dot strip and uh, we can print out the reviews. And yes, we got all the text. Uh, okay, after that, we, uh, we have to fill in uh, the pandas data frame. We uh, need to specify the column name. So let's name them uh, review and um, rating or score. And uh, the rows will, will be empty for now. We are going to fill them in with uh, a review and its rating score for i in uh, range of uh, the length of reviews. We are going to append a list or a row which has review with the index i and uh, ratings with the same index. And after that, we uh, initialize the data frame with the pandas.data frame class and we give it rows as the data and we specify the column names which is done like this and we can print out the data frame and yes we got everything we have uh, reviews and the corresponding rating course uh, the the additional thing we have to do here is uh, as we can see, there is a hundred ratings per page, but there are three pages, so you have to get three requests for it. How uh, do we do that? We do it by uh, web crawling. So we uh, first need, firstly, need, need to see what happens when you click on a page like this. What happens to the URL? it should get another uh, additional parameter which is page a question sign page and uh, one so we clicked on two but we got one which means that it's uh, indexed uh, with starting with zero so um, it's it goes zero one and two and uh, we have to iterate uh, through these values get all the requests and then fill uh, all, the, all of them into our data frame and then we're done. Uh, how do we do the crawling? How do we detect how many pages we have to, we have to crawl? 
we can inspect the element and uh, as we can see this is a ul uh, tag which means unordered list and uh, the li are the bullets and uh, we can see that the last bullet has the class last page uh, which we can use uh, to get uh, the number of uh, pages how many of them are there so we can um, we can try to on the first page that we scrape we can um, we can initialize a variable for example last page tag uh, we are searching in the soup for the li tag with the class last page page last page uh, and then if we find it uh, if there is uh, less than a hundred reviews then the tag won't appear in that case we don't have to do anything uh, and uh, we can also see that uh, in that case you can also also do the zero it's the same as the starting one so nothing's gonna break or something like that yeah we got the same reviews from the beginning uh, if we found the tag uh, then we can set the end pages to uh, the text of the tag. The same thing, we have to turn it into an integer, get text, and get text, strip, to remove the white spaces, else end pages is going to be one. And then we do the same thing, but we have to iterate. Uh, we can initialize the rows here in the column. And then we do a for loop for nth page in uh, range and pages. And then we use the tab to do this and yes we also have to have to do the request the URL uh, the headers the request the cooldown the content and the soup which are going to co copy and paste yes and the second thing is question mark page and percentage sign d we're going to give it two parameters the first one is movie which is constant and then the second one is the end page and after that we are ready to start it we are we are uh, we should get between 200 and 300 reviews and yes 247 that's all you uh, you can see we got all the unique user reviews all their rating scores and that's it for the for the scraping part uh, we can also save the data for example uh, project save data file name uh, file underscore file name we are going to specify for example uh, user reviews and uh, the movie name the data is going to be DF or data frame to CSV. And uh, we can do all right. True. Uh, another thing we 
have to do before we save it to a CSV. Uh, CSV is a type of comma delimited file, which means that if we have uh, commas in our user reviews, it will break the structure. So we have to surround all the user reviews with a pair of um, quotation marks. So it will work. Uh, we can do it by uh, doing a simple uh, list comprehension. Uh, for example, uh, reviews and um, we can do it like this. I for I in reviews. We should be careful with the quotation marks the normal ones and the double ones and yes we uh, we got the printout also we can um, we can go to the asset page And yes, we can see under assets, user reviews, the Shawshank Redemption asset. We can also preview, get the preview. The file type may not be supported. Oh yes, um, I forgot the CSV. Dot CSV in uh, the file name. Now, if we do that again, we should get a. A file which is uh, which is we which we can preview again we can go into the scraping project assets and yes dot csv if we click it we get the preview and yes it looks like this the first column is reviews and the second was one is the ratings and then we can do some sentiment analysis tasks, uh, various uh, machine learning tasks on that data which we got from the web. And that's pretty much it for the, for the demonstration. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to contact me by email or at my LinkedIn profile. Also, uh, if you have any questions now you can ask them in the questions and answers section uh, I will be here for uh, an additional five or ten minutes so if you have any questions feel free to ask and uh, yeah again thank you for listening for watching and uh, I'll see you again next time <laughs>